Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. Boy, was yesterday, Monday, was that a wild ride or not? And it's interesting. I'll share some kind of what I was reading, people's reactions to the big 1,000-point drop in the Dow Industrials yesterday. And it was caused by um, Japan um, raising their interest rates from a negative rate to 025 and so it just threw all markets in a tizzy. Now, when the stock market goes down, um, everybody just speculates like crazy. Here comes the crash. Told you this was coming. Uh, this is coming because uh, the market crashed because they don't like Kamala Harris. And uh, so the stock market's going to go down. You know, they may not like her, uh, but it's not going to go down by a thousand points because of that. I mean, it's, uh, and there's plenty of time for the stock market to panic if they don't want Kamala Harris or Trump in there. Um, but it's just amazing how a one day event can explode into all of this speculation, but I get it. 1987, we had that huge drop. It was like 800 points and, uh, 800 points back when the Dow industrial average was running about, I don't know, 10,000 instead of the 30,000 that we are now, um, AI stocks took the biggest hit yesterday. And so, but because of it, mortgage rates went down and then that started all the glee in the real estate industry. Is this going to heat up the market? Here we go. Can I refinance now? And, uh, boy, what a, what a difference a day makes market turmoil gives home buyers huge mortgage break. Well, Maybe uh, we got down to, we started out at 6.54. We got down to 6.1. Here we are, folks, right back to where we were on Friday. We are 6.5. That's quite a little roller coaster ride in one day. And so people that were saying, here come the rate cuts, that the bond market is has already priced in rate cuts by the central bank coming in September. But yesterday it was after a thousand point drop. Should they have an emergency meeting? Well, the last time they had an emergency meeting was when, with COVID. Everything was shut down. We didn't shut everything down yesterday. The other emergency meeting that they had was when Bear Stearns and Lehman Brothers collapsed, and they had to inject liquidity into the market and quickly get on the phone to banks, say, fine, we're going to cover you. Don't worry about it. Um, a thousand-point drop in the Dow, that's not going to bring along emergency meeting. It was a 5% drop, so... It's still not a fun number to look at, but there was no need for panic. And the bond traders were fleeing to safety, and so they uh, they pushed they pushed rates down. And yesterday, I shared this chart here and said, well, you know, here we are. Look at this is the day that they had yesterday. This is ten year Treasury, and now it's eking its way back up that red number. So it it uh, it's still trending in the right direction if you're waiting for rates to come down now. We've been saying for a long time here that we expect the rest of the year to muddle along. So if in September they give us a 0 0.50 rate cut, I expect or suspect that not a lot is going to change. So the bond market right now pushed things out yesterday in a flight for safety and then pulled back. So I call it a head fake. Sure didn't feel like it yesterday. And, uh, so for those that are waiting for rates to go down, I think if you look at that chart, you know, the good news is there doesn't seem to be any pressure for rates to go higher. So we don't need to worry about that in the short term. Um, and we're not seeing any movement whatsoever on inventory in Arizona. It hasn't gone up, hasn't gone down. It went down slightly last week. It's flat. Even our average list prices here, our list price per square foot, they've gone down a little bit. But you see that they've they've gone down. That's July. And the other downturn that you saw there was July, August, September. And then the flat area is the holiday season. So some of that, if not most of that, is seasonal. And so we're not seeing a, um, a big dip in prices, anything magnificent. Uh, we're seeing months of supply. They went up from a low of 2.3 to a high of 2.9 now. And again, that's not an alarming number. Um, I'd like to see us get up to about a four-month supply and make uh, make it a little easier uh, for buyers out there. Sellers, four-month supply is not hard. You know, if you price it correctly, you'll, move, you'll sell your home. Four to six months is normal as far as supply. If we got up to six months now, I think people flip out. 
I don't see that happening anytime soon. And I, I'm i seeing, interestingly enough, this week, um, a higher uptick of cancellations. And what I mentioned yesterday is that cancellations are people that listed their house and they said, well, let's take it off the market for whatever reason. Either we tried or, you know what, we have a change in plans. We're not going to sell now. Or we thought we could get this price. We can't, so let's take it off and we'll wait. So it's gone up about... 200 units. Now, expireds have gone up as well, but they always do at the end of the month. So I'm tracking on a seven-day moving average, and the number of homes where listings expired on August 1st are still in that mix. So when we get out to next Monday, that number will get back down to its normal amount of about two to 300 homes. So nothing in those two categories is jumping out wildly, except the number of cancellations is what's keeping our net active listings from growing. We're at 17,400 yesterday, and that's about where we're at today. So we're not adding to the inventory level out there for buyers. It's just kind of staying right where it is. And uh, we've referred to it as muddling along on here, and I expect we're probably going to stay there for a while. We're not seeing any desperation yet. So as the worries showed up yesterday in the market, um, you actually, it was interesting, the comments that I read, and uh, there were a lot of comments that, you know, this is the beginning of the end, the coal and the, carry, the canary in the coal mine, uh, real estate's going to crash, stock market's going to crash, you always get that portion of it. But I also saw more curiosity about, does this mean that more buyers will be coming onto the market? And my short answer was, no, not yet. I mean, a half a point drop in interest rates right now, it's not going to pull buyers out. It's just not. The house prices isn't where they want it to be. They aren't there yet. Um, a half a point, while it's good news for buyers, not great. And as I mentioned, the survey that was out there actually said 33% of buyers are waiting until after the election. And I'll repeat myself when I say, I don't know why they're doing that. So it's uh, I'm kind of kind of an interesting period that we're in right now. And I think that uh, anxiety makes people sit on their hands. So, But as the anxiety of the stock market hit yesterday like it did, um, I saw more curiosity as, well, do you think this means that house prices are going to go up faster if they lower rates? I'm like, no, I don't think so because our inventory is still up there. Remember, there's a lot of people sitting on 3% rates that don't ever want to move. They don't want to get rid of that lovely rate. So you can get down to 5.5%. They're not budging. What I think you're going to see first as these rates continue to creep down, and unless something wild like this happens between now and September, um, I think where we're at today is where we're going to stay. I think we're going to stay there for a while. Even if you get down to the mid-fives, which, you know, maybe we will by the time we finish out the end of the year. They're talking about two to three more cuts. I don't think that's going to move the people that are sitting there at 3%. And they're going to go, hey, I'm happy for you. Go out and get a house, but you're not getting mine. So if that happens, if buyer activity picks up, and now it's about 2500 a week, which is where we've been, been hanging in there, not changing much between 2200 and 2600 just that same level. Um, if that goes up to 3000 3500 but our inventory doesn't increase, then yes, we will see pricing pressure on the upside. If we see demand continue to dwindle like it is now, um, and it's showing that way on the Cromford Market Index that demand is low, but when I look again, my seven-day moving average, uh, I push back a little bit and say, it's just not there. It's just staying at one spot. There's 2,500 people a week that are going to buy and uh, come uh, hell or high water, and that's just the way it's going to work. So... We'll continue to watch these numbers, and we'll see. This is Tuesday. We'll see if anything goes on between now and when I talk to Pat on Thursday. We're going to be on an hour earlier on Thursday at 4 o'clock instead of our normal 5 o'clock time, but we'll be able to dissect these numbers a lot better and do a better deep dive. Until then, have a great day, and thanks for watching. Take care.